What's more Canadian than playing hockey in a small town in rural Ontario? In 1963, hockey-loving priests formed the legendary Flying Fathers under the leadership of NHL player turned priest Les Costello to raise money for local charities. But because of a declining number of men joining the Holy Orders and after Les Costello's death in 2002, the Flying Fathers disbanded completely. Now, nearly a decade later, Father John Perdue, Director of Vocations for the Diocese of Peterborough, brought the team back on the ice for one more night of hockey bliss. This story isn't just about the love of the game. It's about young men, their love of God, and their love of neighbor. We're at Ennismore Community Centre. Twelve priests from all over the province played hockey together here on January 29, 2018 against a team of young men from St. Joseph's Parish in Douro, a township of Peterborough County. The priests were proudly wearing the Flying Fathers black and yellow jersey, a throwback to the days when they were a popular attraction for Catholics in Canada. We are originally from Sudbury, that's where we met at Laurentian University and on our third date we went to a Flying Fathers game at the Sudbury Arena and uh, once we were married we moved to Hearst but then three years later to Timmins and Father Les Costello was our assistant priest in our parish and he baptized our daughter, our first child. I was a regular goaltender with the Flying Fathers from 1972 till the Flying Fathers ended about six years ago. I counted up how many games I played. It's over 1,700. How many times did I strap the goalie pads on to play for Jesus, all right? Imagine how they would feel knowing this is happening now. I think it's amazing. It's a great honor to be the flying nun in this game because um, actually I'm the first real nun they've had before they guess they had someone dress up as a nun. So it's an honor to be asked to take on this role and I just hope I do a good job. Our last trip was February 2008 in Alberta and uh, when I heard Father John Perdue was pulling together priests from Ontario to play and he connected with me and inquired about the possibility if I'd be interested in playing and I thought, well, this is great, you know, it's, it's a hockey game and I like to play hockey so and, and I was just curious as to as to what the interest was, you know. Over 400 people, young and old, filled the arena. But this was no ordinary game. Like the original Flying Fathers, this team made sure it was entertaining. The fans got to see some quality hockey, but practical jokes and pranks were worked into the event. A clown, a flying nun, pie throwing, a puck being traded for a football, a fake ordination. There was something for everyone. Well, the pie in the face if you get a goal is bad, yeah. <laughs> I don't think I'd want to score, no, <laughs> yeah. I liked when they put the glass over the net so they couldn't shoot. Uh, are you liking what you're seeing so far? Absolutely, there are two great teams. The fathers are uh, a lot of fun and it seems like they have a lot of skill and so are the kids. Mm, the clown putting the balloon on the player's head. The clown putting a whipped cream on the goalie. For Father John Perdue, who's been playing hockey all his life, even now as a priest, this was a dream come true. Let's do this. 
I guess it starts with me wanting to uh, play for the Flying Fathers. <laughs> Lord help us. They grew up playing hockey. I loved hockey. We played at the seminary. So I'm, I'm very grateful to the St. Augustine Seminary Alumni Association, which I'm now a part of and I pay my dues <laughs> to support the seminarians going on Friday and playing hockey. So I went every Friday and played hockey and I wanted to play. I'd heard of the Flying Fathers and I couldn't even tell you where. I just knew about them somehow and I wonder if it's because uh, like my grandfather was a sports writer for the Peterborough Examiner here in town and he sports were the air he breathed and I wonder if it's somehow connected to him. He, he was a Catholic man and a sports writer. I'm not sure. Somehow I knew about them. Ask anyone who's from a small town, especially in Ontario, about the Flying Fathers and most people could tell you a thing or two about who they are. Over their 45 year run, the team raised millions of dollars for charity. They also won a total of 900 games. They toured the country, even traveled to the United States and Europe, where they got to meet Pope Paul VI. And so one fateful meeting would connect Father John to the man, a retired OPP officer who could help him resurrect the beloved hockey team. I become a priest and I'm appointed to the Cathedral of St. Peter and James in Peterborough. Mm. And within like a couple months, I'm, I'm greeting people at the door of the church. And one of these guys is Frank Quinn, friendly guy, and he's with his wife Bev, and they're great hospitality ministers. They're great people for mm -hmm. it, very Frank. Frank loves to talk, you, you might have <laughs> found out. <laughs> and uh, so Frank asked me, did you ever hear of the Flying Fathers? And I say, yeah, I did, Frank. And I had been interested in them, but I heard mm -hmm. that they're not around anymore. And Frank tells me, I was a general manager. And I said, I thought John McPherson was. And he said, well, they were co-general okay. managers. And Frank says, come over sometime and I'll tell you about the Flying Fathers. And I was eager to. Okay, so what do we have on this table here? Well, basically, it's just the memorabilia I picked up over the years, mm -hmm. 1978. Mm -hmm. We got exactly. together. He came out for supper. He really was anxious to get the Flying Fathers started again but I knew the problems of how we had waned towards the end with a lack of the priests and so on. But he came out here, we had supper at the table, and I more or less tried to dissuade him from starting it up. It's a lot of work, and I wondered if maybe the Flying Fathers hadn't just passed their due date. Maybe it was a thing of the past. It was a great thing in the early days of, of uh, at least the 60s, 70s of hockey mm -hmm. and of the priesthood, and uh, we're a little bit worried that uh, Maybe it was time to end it. Despite Father John's interest in the Flying Fathers, nothing happened for another two years after that encounter with Frank. The stories come together because I'm part of the, the committee that's planning for this tournament that involves the seminarians, and we, we wanted to brand it because mm -hmm. it, as a tournament grows, like it could be the annual such and such. Sure. And I said, it should be the Father Costello classic in hmm. honor of uh, Father Les Costello because hockey, priests, seminarians, vocations, Father yeah. Les, like it just fits. Just makes sense. Yeah. Then we begin planning for the, in 2017, we get together to plan for the 2018 Costello classic. And as we're sitting there, the, the dads who help bring it together say, mm -hmm. like Father John, the, the young men really enjoy playing against the seminarians. It's sort of a highlight of the tournament, the novelty of playing against future priests. Wouldn't it be great if we had a team of priests? And I was like, oh, if we're going to start talking about a team of priests, like you can't talk about a team of hockey playing priests no. in Canada and not invoke the legacy of the Flying Fathers. So I said, we got to call somebody. So literally in the meeting, I call Frank Quinn and Frank's like, nope, I'm not busy. And he jumps in his car and shows up wearing his Flying Father's jersey. And Frank said he was personally very open if the Holy Spirit was raising up mm -hmm. young men uh, to the priesthood who also played hockey and were interested, who, who is he to stand in the way sort of thing. So he calls around and the general consensus was, yeah, go, go ahead. So that gave us the impetus to structure it for 2018 that we'd have the Father Costello Classic. Mm -hmm. The winning team would get the honor of playing against the Flying Fathers. And I started hitting the, the phone and, and we pretty easily put together a team. In the end, I was like, sorry, like the roster is full, which, you know, you just don't want the bench packed, which was a, a remarkable situation to find yourself in. Father John's enthusiasm, he's, he's a little, got a little Costello in him. He's a one-way one guy. He's a good athlete. 
Uh, he's doing a lot of work for vocations here in town. Uh, I'm sure right in the spirit of Father Costello, he, uh, he loved the priesthood, he loved the helping and serving the Lord, and, uh, and I know Father John is full of those qualities as well. Uh, for me, Father Les is a man who combines uh, the humanity of the priesthood with uh, the important um, role that a priest plays spiritually and socially in a community. Mm. So he combines the humanity. He was a card. Uh, lots of funny stories. I, I never <laughs> met him, but I kind of feel like I'm getting to know him. Um, lots of funny stories uh, involving Father Les. Um, I, I personally love some of the ones where he was kind of gruff with people because <laughs> he was from a mining community and he was a man of his era and of his yeah. space and time. And I've heard stories of Father Les having to administer pastoral care by way of a punch in the face, <laughs> which maybe doesn't, you know, uh, often become necessary, but yeah, sometimes. <laughs> So anyway, the stories like that uh, you know, show the humanity of Father Les. Um, his social impact, like the, the, the work for the poor, I'm sure you've mm -hmm. heard a little about um, the St. Martin de Porres uh, Center that they've started in Timmins in honor of Father Les, who was devoted to St. Martin de Porres, mm -hmm. and the good that's been done for the poor. I heard that his rectory, the garage, was like a St. Vincent de Paul, like mm -hmm. people would drop things off and they'd be gone in two days. Wow. He never owned a... Uh, a truck, you know, he borrowed them and he would deliver fridges and things to people that needed them. And so his, his legacy for the poor, um, you know, uh, is, is profound. And then finally, like all the people who were married by him and baptized yeah. by him and their spiritual lives were fed through, you know, his services, which I'm told were quick. <laughs> <laughs> um, so for me, he, he's a man who puts together some of the, the beautiful aspects of the priesthood. The, the humanity, you know, is mm. a sports playing, um, uh, fun loving, mm. uh, amicable guy who could light up a room when he mm. walked in, you know, uh, with the, again, the social importance of the priesthood as a leader and advocate for the poor mm. and the spiritual uh, role of the priesthood. So that's, that's some of who Father Les is to me, mm -hmm. um, having not met him personally. He just started out in 1963 in North Bay, Ontario. A young guy had lost his eyes, so we thought it would be very good to get together a bunch of priests playing hockey against guys that were in worse shape than we were, like cops or uh, radio guys or TV guys or uh, teachers or something like that. So we had a game and we raised $5,000, we gave it to the mother. Mother was very happy because she didn't have the proper insurance. So we thought it was a good gimmick. It was better than bingo. So we continued on to raise money for charity and that's what we're doing today. Father Les Costello. He was the heart and soul of the Flying Fathers. Inspired by his patron, a 16th century South American saint, Martin de Porras, the poor were always at the forefront of his mind. When he became a priest in 1957, he devoted himself to helping families in need, providing them with food, clothing, and furniture. Co-founding the Flying Fathers was a way of expanding his work of charity. But this was a far cry from the life he could have lived as an NHL player. Everybody knows any Canadian boy just died to play in the NHL. And uh, he just said to me, uh, very seriously, you know, uh, first of all, he would have to say a joke and say, oh, I was too lazy to work, so I thought I'd, I wanted to be guaranteed a meal, things like that. But then he said, no, he said, uh, when the Lord calls, he said, you listen. He said, when he points to you, you answer. He said, I had no, no choice in the matter. When, when he came to the priesthood, people that knew him would always said he's the same holy terror that I always was, champion of, champion of the poor, advocate for social justice, uh, but he spent his whole life in prayer by serving. Mm -hmm. Now his patron saint was St. Martin de Porras, which is, uh, so we've, we've talked about this. Um, what kind of inspiration did he draw from that, that saint? Well, I think he saw the poverty. He knew the life of uh, St. Martin de Porres. He was a mixed race uh, native person of Peru. His father had been a Spanish soldier 
and, uh, he, and he left his mother and left them destitute and poor. And uh, St. Martin was known to, even when they were starving, to share what little he had. And uh, he just went on with a wonderful life of service to God. And uh, there's many examples of why he should have been a priest. I can't, I can't name them now. But Father uh, Costello really saw Christ in the poor, and that's what spirited him on. But there was an urging from heaven above, a calling from God whom he could not mock, skated away from the game, left our country in shock. Where would God lead him? He obeyed God's will. He entered the seminary and studied until, back in his hometown with great jubilation, was ordained Father Costello with his ordination. He brought to the table faith, hope, and giving, and taught us to share as we make our living, and do it lighthearted as Jesus Christ would, and give to the poor just as we should. After Father Costello's death in 2002, life for the Flying Fathers wasn't quite the same. And slowly, there weren't enough hockey-playing priests around to carry on the tradition, a trend which had already begun to take place a number of years before. Well, I would say after the sexual revolution of the 60s, I think my generation were not very good at raising young men and women to religious life. And so we just ran out of, uh, out of a priest uh, born and raised in Canada that played hockey. As you know, you know, in the last 30 years, the number of priests that have come uh, from Africa and the mm -hmm. Philippines and so on, and have come to Canada. Well, we just didn't have any, uh, any Canadian-born people that could play hockey. So eventually what happened was, as the players got older and drifted away from the team, they just couldn't play anymore. Mm -hmm. Well, I would have to pick up local uh, police officers and firemen, ringers you might say, to help bolster the team. So finally in the end we probably only had six uh, priests left that were actual priests. Mm -hmm. And so we had the feeling, well, you know, this isn't exactly the way it should be. It should be still the Flying Fathers with a few laymen, possibly. Mm -hmm. But uh, in any event, we, were, we, we felt that it was time maybe to hang up, uh, hang up the collar and the, and the hockey sticks. We're not yet sort of out of the woods, do you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like there's still a long way to go. We have great needs for more uh, courageous young men to come forward and, and say yes to the call. Mm -hmm. um, but I would say we are, you know, thanks be to God and to good people who are working hard. We're, we're mm -hmm. sort of the trend is, is going in a good direction. More young men are seeing it as an option. So I do think like where we're at is sort of a, a, a slow upward uh, climb. That, mm -hmm. Personally, that's kind of my assessment of where we're at vocationally yeah. uh, in the church in Canada. I, I would attribute a lot to St. John Paul II and uh, his World Youth Days and his personal messaging to young people. You know, uh, mm -hmm. I, I think young people heard that the church cares for them in the person of John Paul II and uh, has a place for them and has need for them, you know, you're needed. What would you say are some of the challenges uh, or obstacles that young men are, uh, are facing when, they're, when it comes to, to discerning a vocation, whether that be to the priesthood or something else? Most of them could be uh, chalked up to um, misconceptions or misunderstandings about the priesthood. I think the priesthood properly understood would be deeply appealing to young men. Uh, mm -hmm. if, they, if some of the, the falsehoods could be peeled away and the, the gift of priestly ministry, um, John Paul II, again, in his uh, reflection on the 50th anniversary of his ordination after 50 years of the mm -hmm. priesthood, called the book Gift and Mystery. Is that how it's perceived by most <laughs> young people? No. Uh, is John Paul II wrong? No. You know what? There's a disconnect there. Mm -hmm. It's not perceived uh, correctly as the gift and the mystery that it is. What do you think is an answer to that, to start, you know, peeling back some of those misconceptions, as you say? Yeah, um, I think working on uh, public messaging, do you know what I mean? Mm. Like, it, it sounds... Um, um, bad to say marketing, do you know what I mean? But, um, but in a sense, like getting the right true and, and um, moving messages out to young people is, mm -hmm. is really important. So I don't really know 
yet what the answer to that mm -hmm. is and I'm sort of learning as I as I go you know and and, and trying and failing uh, but but it's it's an interesting challenge mm -hmm. so what would what is your hope looking towards the future for young men or for young women as well like what's what's your hope yes um, well uh, I want a flood of courageous and uh, selfless young people to mm. inundate the church and change the world. <laughs> so that, that's my hope. Um, Lord, make it happen. Um, yeah, honestly, but, but then practically, you know, speaking, I guess, um, I guess a breaking down of those, mm -hmm. those misconceptions that mm. will open the doors wider for young people to consider a life lived for Christ. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, th that would be a hope. Um, yeah, another hope is uh, attention directed to vocations. You know, because I work in this field, my heart is very much in it. Do you think that uh, something like the Flying Fathers or the game that you had, um, you know, bringing together all these priests and, and having all these families come out to watch, you know, these, these guys play hockey again, um, do you think that that has any traction? For, for families, for young men uh, who are coming to, to play or to watch? It certainly has value. Like mm -hmm. I, I saw the value and I thank God for the value of uh, the, the positive image, like the joyful and human image of the priesthood mm -hmm. that was portrayed that night was lovely to see and um, heard about the impact among some of the young people from parents, from themselves, you know, lots of people have given some feedback. So it certainly has value. In an age where people have many entertainments and the mm -hmm. Flying Fathers isn't like the event in the town for the month, mm -hmm. it's like one other thing that we have to consider going to this week. Right. Um, is, does it still have value? Mm -hmm. it, it, will it continue to have traction? I think it did and I hope it will. We did this tour of Europe and uh, you know how hockey players hold a stick? Right. So he had to give Pope Paul a lesson <laughs> because when he grabbed the stick, he held it like that. Mm -hmm. So Father Costello, being the guy he is, he said, Your Holiness, he said, all you can do with that is stir a big pot of spaghetti. <laughs> well, he was in a little bit of hot water for saying that to His Holiness. But as I say about Father Les, he was the irreverent reverend. Now, we can hardly compare ourselves to the Harlem Globetrotters, <laughs> but, but there is that draw, you know. We take our, our hockey very seriously in Canada, as you know. We live and die with our world juniors and with the Olympic teams and so on. And uh, Father Costello just believed in, in uh, his work of charity and fun and family. As I said earlier, save the family, you save the world was very big, uh, big in his, his life. And so that's what I think the draw is. To see priests a little bit irreverent, you might say, throwing pies at one another. Silly, silly things. Mm -hmm. You know, as, as Father Costello always said, if you get a 70-year-old grandfather with a 10-year-old mm -hmm. son on his knee, and they both get the joke, we're doing something, bringing families together, raising money for charity, mm -hmm. and laughter is good for the body and soul. That was, that was his theme. a new generation of hockey playing priests. Anything is possible, of course, but the greater hope is to continue raising up generations of young men who will answer the call to the priesthood. For that to happen, connection to a larger than life story like the Flying Fathers and people like Father Les Costello have the power to make a difference.